Good morning and welcome to our daily word and prayer. My name is Tom Short. So glad to have you along with us today. It's like to talk about the wise men. Got a question. Have you finished your Christmas shopping yet? Well, I'm pretty close. Got a couple of things I may need to get yet. I'm still having a little trouble working things out for my 11-year-old granddaughter who requested a Tesla and a personal butler, but we'll work on it. Anyway, that we'd like to look today at the wise men and this idea of bringing gifts. And what was the significance behind their gifts? This tradition has been around a long time. And it's been used a number of ways. Do you know there was even a time during the Dark Ages where kings, rulers, demanded the common people to bring them gifts based on this scripture? And they said, look, every people brought gifts to the king. I'm the king. You ought to be giving me gifts and tribute here during Christmas time. Wow, let's not be like that. That was oppression. That was wrong. That was false. This whole long history of giving gifts, and indeed it drives our economy and much of the Western world today. But let's see what happened here with the wise men. And what was the story behind these, these fellows who came, okay? We're reading from Luke, or excuse me, from Matthew chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Here we go. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, along with all Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and scribes, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judea, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For from you will come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called upon the Magi, called for the Magi, and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, report to me so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star, which they had seen in the east, went on ahead of them until it came to stop over the place where the child was to, be bo- was to be found. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And after they came into the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. And they fell down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And after being warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. There's so much wonderful understanding, meaning in this story. There's misunderstanding. We don't know how many wise men they were. We don't know that they were kings. We've you know, got the song, We Three Kings of Orinar. We don't know if there's only three. That tradition grew a little bit because there were three gifts given. We don't know exactly when they arrived. They, you know, they, Herod killed all the children under age two. So it's very possible that they arrived, it maybe could have been as much as a year, year and a half after uh, Jesus was born. And if that were the case, it'd be quite interesting to think that they stayed in Bethlehem that long. And you wonder, how did they do it? How were they able to provide? How were they able to make it? And then, well, there's quite a bit of interesting stuff. Let's just look ahead at these three gifts. There's three of them we want to talk about. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, why did they bring these three gifts? And the answer is, I hate to disappoint you, but the Bible doesn't tell us. There, there's thought to be a lot of significance behind them, but we don't know for certain. We can speculate. And so let's do speculate a little bit. Gold was a va- valuable then, it's valuable now. It has always been considered a, a form of currency, a form of value, a store of value, of wealth. It was used often in, in, the make, in religious worship. Idol worshipers would, you, would make their idols of gold many times. The, the ark was to be covered with gold. There was gold used in the building of the temple. But could it be of interest to you? Have you ever thought 
it wasn't long after this, of course, Herod was going to kill this Jesus. He was jealous. He thought there was another king, and Herod was uh, jealous for his own power. And so God warned Joseph in a dream to flee. Someone was coming after him, and they went, and they killed the babies of Bethlehem, every, everyone two years and under. And before this happened, God warned them to flee to Egypt. And you stop and think. It's a different world in those days. They didn't have credit cards. They probably didn't have a lot of hotels along the way, the different things that you could, uh, you, you know, just make your way or buy your way there. Perhaps that gold was provided by God for the journey they were about to take into Egypt. We don't know how long they were there. But he probably, Joseph would have needed a way of provision, and perhaps God provided through that gift that way. How about the frankincense? What's behind the frankincense? Again, we don't know for sure, but frankincense was a sap, came from a tree. They would cut a hole in the bark, you know, they'd, they'd slice the bark, and the sap would come out, it would be frankincense. It, when burnt, it was a beautiful smelling uh, uh, smell and an aroma and was thought of as being righteous, and they thought of as holy, and it was used in many religious ceremonies. Again, it spoke perhaps that this, this king that was born was holy, was righteous. He was not just a, going to be a political king. He was a king in the kingdom of God. There was religious significance, spiritual significance, godly significance to his birth. How about the myrrh? Again, we don't know for sure, but how was myrrh used in those days? Myrrh was used. Remember when Jesus was dying on the cross, they offered him myrrh and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh to help uh, deaden what he was going through or help take, take away the, the pain of what he was going through. And he refused it. Later on, when Nicodemus came and they came to, they took his body, they, they used spices including myrrh. To, again, myrrh also was cut from the tree, and myrrh was used to, uh, it basically spoke of death. It spoke of something that was used during death proceedings, funerals, so on, embalming, and so forth. Which brings us to a really interesting point. I mean, why would you bring that, like, to a baby shower? You ever stop and think about it? That would kind of almost be like bringing, like, a coffin to a baby shower today or something. Why would you do that? Why would you bring something that would speak of death when a baby's born? It just seems a little bit out of place, does it not? And yet, what do we see? Jesus, are you ready for this? He was born to die. And somehow these magi may have understood that, that he was born to die. They evidently, these magi had come from the east perhaps all the way from Persia, which would be modern-day Iran, which might mean that they could have traveled seven, eight hundred, nine hundred miles to arrive there in Bethlehem. It probably took a while for the stars started shining when Jesus was born. Maybe it started shining earlier, I don't know. But it probably took quite a while for them to get there. And we don't know how many of them came. It probably is more than three, or they had a whole caravan with them. It says all of Jerusalem was troubled when these people showed up. But why did they understand this? They, they evidently knew the Scripture. Evidently, they knew that they were looking for the King of the Jews, that the star indicated the King of the Jews. And so they were coming, and they probably seemed to have been familiar with Old Testament Scriptures and Maybe they understood something about the Messiah would be giving his life. But whether they did or not, it reminds us. Jesus was born to die. He may have been the only person ever in the history of the world who was born and whose ultimate purpose was not to live, but his ultimate purpose was to die. Think of that. Because all of Jesus' life ultimately led up to the cross where Jesus would die for the sins of the world. You want to know the great accomplishment of Jesus. With most people, you know, what is your great accomplishment? You look at what did you achieve during your life. Jesus' greatest accomplishment was achieved in his death because it was through his death that he secured the way of our redemption. 
that he made a way for God and sinners to be reconciled, that he brought peace between God and man, that he reversed the curse, shall we say, that came from the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned against God, a rebellion began. And Jesus had to give his life as a sacrifice for our sins to make a way for sinful people, lost people, to enter back into the kingdom, uh, kingdom of God, to re be reconciled to the Father, to receive salvation or redemption from, our, from the curse. Jesus Christ, think of it. This Christmas, as you celebrate the birth of Jesus, remember, the, remember he was born to die for you and for me. That's what's glorious about this Christmas season. Jesus, we bless you today and we worship you. What an awesome reality that these gifts remind us. <clears throat> for Father, perhaps, of how your, your provision for the changes and the disruption of schedule that came to jo uh, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, of the purity and holiness of Jesus, and indeed that, Jesus, you were ultimately born to die for us. You came to give your life as a sacrifice for our sins. We're reminded of this Christmas season that God so loved the world that he gave, that you gave your only begotten son, that whoever of us would believe in him might not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. We praise you. We give you, we give you thanks. What, a, what an awesome story. What an awesome reality, a true story of who you are and why you came. We bless you. Jesus, I think also of how the wise men, wise men diligently sought you. They came all those miles away. They came on this journey. Father, I pray today for any who are still on the journey to discover you. Some who might be listening right now, Lord, some who we know and we love, our family members, our friends, neighbors, co-workers. Lord, there, we believe there are many people who are still on that journey, have not yet discovered the Christ child. And I pray, Father, that you would guide them. I pray they'd persevere. I pray they'd, you said, seek and you'll find. I pray they'd keep on seeking until they find. Right now we think of loved ones, Lord, that we hope find you. And we pray they would never give up. We pray they'd diligently seek like those wise men did. Diligently seek until they find you and have the life, discover the life, and obtain the life that we have had or that we have obtained through faith in Jesus Christ. We bless you today and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for being with me. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you stuck with me this long, you've probably gotten something out this time, and I hope so. But did you know we're here every day? We are. We come here at 8.30 a.m. live. This community of people to get in the Word of God. We've been doing it now for over two years. I hope you'll join us because I promise you this. If you get in the Word of God every day, and pray it into your heart with us. It's gonna change your life. And if that's what you want, if you wanna be more and more like Jesus, but want your life transformed, if you wanna become more of the person God made you to be, you gotta get in the Word of God. And there's a great way, and it's a great way to have someone teaching you who's, who's maybe further along in this journey. So if that's you, and if you want that, make a commitment, be here regularly. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share with your friends and so on. But you make a commitment, whether live or later in the day, or even just listening to the podcast, which you can do on the Apple, Spotify, or Google platform. Make sure you're joining us. It'll make a difference. You do this between now and the end of January, you'll see a difference by that. I challenge you to do that. So until we meet tomorrow, might God be blessing you. Might this Christmas time be a wonderful time for you. And might God fill you with joy and the joy of the Lord. And remember, we worship one who was born to die, and for that we are forever grateful. God bless you. I love you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.